Aloha class. One of your very smart classmates came to me and said that they were having trouble connecting the dots between the lecture material and the homework. So we're going to have a little bit of a talk to try to help you bridge that gap. So today's topic is heat balance. And this figures prominently in your homework as well as being a really important physiological mechanism by which you know animals have to maintain homeostasis of their heat you know you can't get too far out of heat balance so um, what is heat balance well body temperature is stable if an animal is in heat balance that means that if the gains in heat are greater than the losses well your temperature is going to go up makes sense right so likewise, if your heat gain is less than your losses, or your losses are greater than your gains, well then your temperature, your body temperature, is going to go down. You can figure out what's going on using the balance equation, where we have as inputs, the, the biggest input usually is the heat of metabolism, and that comes from your metabolic rate. Then you can lose heat through conduction and convection and for the purposes of our rough calculations we're going to basically just keep them combined. You also, animals typically gain heat through radiation and most typically they lose heat through evaporation but whether it's a gain or loss will depend on the specific circumstances and that's why there's a plus and a minus because pluses are for gains and minuses are for losses. So when you add them all together, well, then you get a value for the heat of storage, or the delta HS. And if this delta HS is positive, then your body temperature is going to go up. And if it's negative, your body temperature is going to go down. Make sense? So let's look at an example. Here's our cute little 100 gram juvenile iguana. And he's been basking, so he's got an AMR of one kilojoule per hour. That's his active metabolic rate. He's just finished, so his body temperature is now up at a toasty 40 degrees Celsius, and he's pretty happy. You can see the little smile on his face. Now he's in the shade, so heat of radiation is zero. The heat of evaporation, we can also assume, is pretty much zero because um, he's got really uh, thick keratin on his skin and doesn't really evaporate a whole lot through his skin and he's not breathing very fast. For right now, we'll just assume it's negligible. The heat of conduction is um, minus 10 kilojoules per hour, so he's losing heat via conduction because the sign is negative. Is he in heat balance? Well, let's see. If we put, plug in all the terms and add them up, we see that his heat of storage is minus 9 kilojoules per hour. So, you no. Know, he's actually losing heat at a rate of 9 kilojoules per hour. He is not in heat balance. If he were, it would be zero. Now, how much does body temperature go up or down? Well, we can actually calculate that because we are smart physiologists. And we are going to apply this flux equation. Um, and these things are actually on the handout that I gave you. So in general, a flux is any kind of um, transfer of mass or energy per unit time. So it's a rate, and it's you know a transfer between compartments. For example, heat across from the inside to the outside of the body. There is an important parameter for conductance, and that measures how easy or how permissive the flow is. So if something has a lot of insulation, then the conductance will be low. And then the last part is this gradient. It's a gradient in mass or energy, and um, sometimes it's like the difference in concentrations between things in an osmotic gradient or an electrical gradient, but in our case, what we have is a temperature gradient. But anyway, this, this gradient can be thought of as the engine or the pressure that pushes the flow through. Okay, pretty simple. It's the rate. The rate of flow is really the, um, the how permissive the flow is times the, the gradient or the push, the how, how, 
how much pressure there is for the flow to occur. So for heat and body temperature, um, it's important to remember that we are all slightly salty bags of water. We are all slightly salty bags of water. What does that mean? Well, um, we are actually composed mostly of water. So when we're talking about changing our body temperature, you can think of it as how much energy does it take to change water of an equivalent mass? So the specific heat is a property of matter, and it's the amount of heat per unit mass required to raise the temperature one degree Celsius. Um, and the specific heat Q is um, a constant, so that's the conductance, right? The specific heat constant. And the specific heat constant is a material property. So it depends on what the medium is, whether it's air, water, or et cetera. And you can find some examples of specific heat constants in Withers Table 5-5. But for changing in body temperature, we're going to use the specific heat of water times the mass that we're talking about times the temperature gradient or difference. So for example, one calorie is the heat needed to raise water, one gram of water, by one degree Celsius. So that equals 4.184 joules. So um, a calorie is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius for water. So we can now use this. So how much does the body go up or down for a given amount of heat? Okay, well, let's look at another example. We have our friend Kimo again, and this time he is a 70 kilogram human being who's been sunbathing and gaining heat at a rate of 400 kilojoules per hour. How fast is his body temperature going to rise? Okay, so he's clearly not in heat balance, right? So how much does his body temperature rise? Well, we'll use the specific heat of water equation. Okay, so we plug in for Q, 400 kilojoules per hour, and for the specific heat constant, we're going to use 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Mass is 70 kilos times the change in temperature. So what we want to know, of course, is the change in temperature. <laughs> so we solve for delta T. Okay, so now remember, we have to make sure that all the units ma match and that they cancel. So we have to convert kilojoules to joules and we have to convert kilograms to grams so that everything will cancel nicely. Okay, so after we do a little bit of algebra, multiply things out, cancel units, always, always, always make sure that your units cancel. And then we end up with a result of 1.37 degrees Celsius per hour. So he is changing body temperature at a rate of almost one and a half degrees Celsius per hour. Okay, so he is clearly not in heat balance. And furthermore, if he doesn't start sweating soon, how long is it going to be before his brain starts to die? Remember, um, we can't be heated indefinitely, and the brain in particular has a kind of low critical temperature. So if the brain gets to be about 40 0.5 degrees Celsius or higher in a human, well, you're going to start to have cell death. So let's figure this out. How are we going to solve that? We know that the temperature is going up by 1.37 degrees Celsius per hour, and we know that the critical temperature we, we don't want to hit is 40.5. So if we assume that he starts at 37 and he's going up at that rate, well, then we just equate this rate of 1.37 equal to the different the temperature gradient, which is 40.5 minus 37, divided by the number of hours that it's going to take for it to go that high. Okay, and we don't know what x is, so we're going to solve for x. Okay, so x turns out to be 2.55 hours. So good thing for sweat glands, otherwise he would be a dead duck pretty soon. So remember, temperature is important for all animals, um, whether you're an endotherm or an ectotherm. Um, and, and endotherms in particular have a thermoneutral zone. Well, all animals do, actually. 
where they don't really have to expend much energy to keep their body at a certain temperature. Um, but if they go above it or below it, they're going to start to expend energy to try to keep that temperature down. And once you go way past that, there's a point of no return and uh, you, you get catastrophic failure. So, heat balance. What is, what is the significance of heat balance as animals change in size and all, through all kinds of different forms in evolutionary history? Well, Haldane, who was an eminent biologist, said, Physiology is the story of evolution's struggle to maintain an appropriate surface area to distance ratio in relation to the volume of an animal. Huh? What the heck is he talking about? So if we look at our flux equation, we notice a bunch of things, okay? Magnitude of the flux is going to be proportional to surface area, okay? Because flux increases with surface area. That's the surface at which you, um, through which you lose or gain heat. The magnitude of the flux is proportional to 1 over the distance. So flux increases with a decrease in distance. And as an animal gets very large, surface area to volume goes down. So surface area, because surface area to volume is proportional to size to the two-thirds power. So what strategies do animals have? Well, they can, instead of just changing in shape um, isometrically with size, they can actually change in shape so that they have increased surface area as they get larger. Another strategy would be to change the number of compartments. Maybe instead of one big compartment, you have multiple compartments that help you with increasing your rate of flux. Um, this is just kind of a general strategy, and you can see that, for example, in the lungs. As animals get larger, they have many more alveoli. You can maintain a surface area to distance ratio within compartments, but vary the number of compartments. And then finally, you can evolve novel transport systems to decrease that, that distance that the flux has to cross. So you can see some of these things in lots in really cool animals. Um, and this is an example from your textbook about desert fox, uh, foxes and their ears and their wonderful ears. So the kit fox lives in the desert and has these ginormous ears and uh, short fur. And so what they're doing, you can see that the ears are vascularized and what they're doing is they're bringing their blood to the surface and so that they can radiate heat much more effectively. They're like big baffle radiators. <laughs> Aren't they cute? And then you have this temperate fox, which is, of course, living in a more moderate climate. And they, he just has sort of normal sized ears with a normal amount of fur. And that's compared to the Arctic fox, which has these cute little tiny diminutive ears and protected by a lot of fur. So that is really going to reduce um, heat loss through convection as the wind, the cold winds blow, it's gonna, not going to reach the skin of the ears as easily as the desert fox, for example. There's other adaptations that animals have. For example, iguanas have these um, circulatory system adaptations. So they use vasodilation. So they actually have a bed of capillaries near the top, the dorsal surface of the animal. And when it wants to heat up, it just sits there basking and opens up those blood vessels so that, um, and it also starts to uh, rapidly pump its heart. So it's bringing blood to the back where it, there's a huge bed of capillaries that it exposes to the sun and gets all nice and warm before circulating through the rest of the body. Pretty brilliant, huh? And the marine iguanas, when they dive, they actually employ vasoconstriction and they um, lower their heart rate. So that keeps the blood more in the core of the body so that it doesn't lose heat through the skin when it's in the cold water. 
and you're all going to watch this really amazing YouTube video online and um, answer the homework questions for extra credit. It's a really cool video and you shouldn't miss it. And then of course there's panting and here is Tim Tam being a very amazing example of panting. <laughs> and he's wondering why am I filming him. But he's a good sport. But dogs are really brilliant. Have you noticed that when they are hot, they just really increase their surface area when they're in contact with a cooler surface? Of course, they're increasing their rate of conduction. And he is, if you notice, perfectly in line with the direction of the fan. <laughs> so he is increasing his rate of convection. So I hope that you can now go out there and observe all of these amazing animals and their wonderful little behaviors to deal with the hot, hot Septembers that we have in Hawaii. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye.